let's move on. Okay, this is an assignment for you to watch that video. And the students there are asking really good questions. So I'm gonna go through this, uh, give you an overview. In the meantime, think of a question to ask. So these are actually Q and A sessions. The videos that are online. This is a good quest. This is a good time to ask questions. Okay, let's see what we have here. It's the same paradigm of retraining, fine tuning. We just saw a paper giving us RNNs, LSTMs, or stacks of LSTMs. We just saw another one giving us convolutional neural networks. We had the same pattern when we were doing classification, sentiment analysis. We had multiple options, CNNs, RNNs, transformers, or recursive type of models, tree-based models. When we went to translation, we had the same pattern. You could choose RNNs, you could choose CNNs, you could choose uh, transformers and attention mechanism. It's the same thing here. What we are gonna be doing here is gonna use the transformer architecture and transformers, when it comes to text, are gonna prove really powerful. The reason for it is there is very little inductive bias in them. And what do I mean? When you are working with a CNN, you have this locality assumption. So your filters are gonna look at uh, three words in your sequence or three words at a time. That's the kernel size. The other one is you are using the same weights and shifting them over your sequence. That's another bias in your model. It's a prior assumption that you're making, which could be a good assumption, which could be a bad assumption. For images, it turns out that that's a very good assumption. For text, maybe if you have a lot of data, you need to let your data speak. Have as little assumptions as possible in your model. RNNs are making the assumption that you have this sequential nature in language. And the other assumption is that the words uh, earlier in a sentence matter the least for predicting perhaps the words towards the end of a sentence. These are the type of assumptions that exist in RNNs. They might end up being useful if you have small data, but if you are doing natural language processing, you have a lot of data, then perhaps you need to work with a model that is as flexible as possible for it to be able to pick up those uh, details from the data itself. So the idea is to let the data speak. For the task of unsupervised pre-training, it's the same as before. Given the past, predict the future. The only thing that you're changing is this probability being modeled using a transformer architecture, which is exactly what you have here. You have your text plus the positional embedding going through masked multi self-attention and why is it masked? Because you want to predict the next word and you don't want to be cheating. You don't want to give it the answer. There's gonna be layer norm. There's gonna be this really important feed forward component, layer norm. And then uh, this task classifier is not gonna be present when you're doing unsupervised pre-training. You're just predicting your next word. So you have this head and that's coming out of the soft max. And then you do your training maximize the likelihood of the sentences in your corpus. Once that is done, you're going to do fine tuning and that's going to end up being supervised. That one, you're going to do transfer learning from this pre-training process to the target task. And it means that you need to have task specific heads here. If your task is classification, you have the start of a sentence, the text itself, the extract token, going inside your architecture. The architecture is going to do its magic. In the end, it's going to give you some probabilities. And this is where you have a task specific head. So this linear is going to be different from what you have here. It's a different matrix. And this is going to naturally be different. Why is that? When you are predicting an X word, you are predicting out of 32,000 subwords. This is your vocabulary size. What is the next word within my vocabulary? When you have a particular task, that could be classification, sentiment analysis, you have two classes. Was it a positive review? Was it a negative review? And you have two outputs here. And this linear is gonna have, it's gonna take you from the dimension of your hidden state to dimension two or dimension five, depending on how many classes you have. And then you are gonna do fine tuning. 
not only you're gonna adjust these parameters of your linear, you can also uh, decrease the learning rate and adjust the parameters of your transformer slowly so that you don't forget the entire language that you learned. You can have another task, which could be entailment, given the premises, uh, does this hypothesis or is this hypothesis a natural follow-up or is it irrelevant or is it a contradiction? And then you can modify your head. In this case, it's gonna have three outcomes. For a similarity, you want to say, are these two sentences similar? You can have your text, the second text, you can reverse the order, text, the other text, push them through your transformer architecture, and then output the linear, same or not the same. This is a two-way classification. Or actually, this could be one way. The other one is one minus the probability of the first one. For multiple choice, you give this some context. You're going to say, is this the answer? How about the other one? How about this other answer? This is a multi-choice question. And then you're going to output the probability that the first answer is the answer using some linear heads. So I want you to take a look at these data sets. These are the actual downstream tasks. I don't think you guys are going to be able to train a large model for unsupervised pre-training. But what you can do is take a pre-trained model and fine tune it on these tasks and these data sets. And then you can take a look at the hugging face uh, transformers. It's going to make your lives much easier. Was everything clear? Any questions? And this is GPT-1. If you hear the word GPT, we have three versions of it so far. GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3. This is GPT-1. Mathematically speaking, everything is nice and easy. You're just predicting the next word. Uh, when it comes to computationally speaking, and the amount of hardware that you're going to need, the amount of software engineering that you need to do, these are not easy. And usually a team of engineers are going to work on that. Any questions about GPT-1? And the other thing that I forgot to mention here is while you are modifying or fine tuning for your task at hand, the parameters of this neural network might change drastically. And that is called catastrophic forgetting. To avoid that, you have multiple options. One of them is lower the learning rate by perhaps one order of magnitude for these parameters compared to the parameters of your task classifier. Another option is to keep it, uh, keep the first task, which is unsupervised pre-training, still there on uh, while you're fine tuning. So keep that loss still present with some coefficients. There is a question in the chat. Can we have a bit more advice on how to fine tune these networks? Is it taking the weights of, a, of the pre-trained network and then running a few more epochs on a different data set or something else? Yes, exactly. So you have a data set for pre-training, which could be all of the text on Wikipedia. Once the pre-training is done, somebody gives you this data set, for instance, SNLI which is about entailment, natural language inference. You're going to modify the architecture a little bit. It's head. The body, you're going to keep the same. You're going to change the head. You're going to change your input a little bit. And for entailment, this is exactly what you're going to be doing. And then you're going to do some optimization, some gradient descent steps. Your objective is to learn this linear layer at the same time this transformer, you want to fine tune it. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. So that's actually a very good question. Uh, I think I'm gonna stop here. For those of you who want to leave, you can leave. For those of you who have more questions, I'll be around.